The human genome is really large, so it's uh, almost 3.2 billion letters long. Um, so if you were to read that out one letter at a time, um, one every second, then that would take you about a century to read it all out. But there's lots of information in that. One of the problems that we do have is that we don't know what all this information means yet. So in a lot of cases, uh, we will get this string of letters, the A, T, Cs and Gs, but we don't actually know what the function is of this information that we're getting out. One of the important things about whole genome sequencing is while we get all of this information, we don't have to use all this information right now. We can select which bits we want to look at. And at the moment, we're selecting the bits that we understand. But that information is still there. We can look at it later when we start to understand a little bit more about the different aspects of the genome. We can then go back and interrogate the data again. So I suppose we can think about it that you sequence once and you interrogate often. Although the first human genome took a long time to sequence, we're now with sequence genomes much, much quicker because of changes in the technology. Now that we can compare lots and lots of genomes, we can get a better understanding of the differences between them. And those differences are important because they're the ones that tell us why someone might have a particular disease or what risk they might have of a certain disease. The more people that we sequence um, their genomes, the more that we're understanding about the different changes. Um, and that means that we're learning more about all the different changes, which means that we can then go back and ask the same questions again um, of the data. So I think it's not just a one-stop shop. We don't just do this once. You may do the sequencing once, but the interrogation will happen possibly multiple times over a person's lifetime. What's being used actually in quite a lot of clinical settings now is what we call whole exome sequencing. So about 2% of our genome has what we call protein coding genes. And these are the genes that contain the instructions for our cells to develop proteins, which essentially are what allows our cell to function and ensure that it's doing the job that it's supposed to be doing. It is believed that quite a lot of the um, variations that can cause human disease, or at least these rare genetic conditions, will be located in these exomes. So initially it was felt that actually if we just sequence these exomes, we're going to be able to find out quite a lot of this information. And it means you're only sequencing 2% of the human genome, so it's a much shorter job really. The more that we learn about this, we're finding that actually people can use the technique of whole genome sequencing, so you're sequencing all aspects of the genome, but then when you're analysing, you're just pulling out the exomes to analyse. A lot of research is finding that they're getting much better results or they're picking up a lot more variants by using that technique rather than just starting to sequence the exomes. We've come a long way in our understanding of genomes over the last 10 to 15 years. And with the changes in technology, we're now able to compare lots and lots of genomes and generate lots and lots of data. And all of that data collectively will help us to get a much better understanding of the role of genetics and genomics in health and disease. And that will lead to much better treatments, much better diagnostic um, methods to be able to understand how we can improve health.